in what's become customary fashion and expected of Virat Kohli in a chase, especially in India. It's been a vintage performance by the hosts. At halftime, we saw the West Indies would uh, challenge India with 322 for eight after a terrific 100 by Shimran Hetmeyer, his third in ODI cricket. A uh, standout for Yuzvendra Chehal, who conceded just 41 on a day where nearly 650 runs were scored. On the other side, Rohit Sharma with his 20th one-day international 100. Virat Kohli with his 36th fast approaching 10,000 runs. It was all too easy for the Indian captain and vice-captain. 246 runs between them. That ensures an eight-wicket win to take a one-nil lead. This is ESPN Cricket uh, post-match show. Uh, this uh, Ajit Agarkar and Phil Simmons, who we've got finally. Phil, so let me start with you and make sure we've got a sound enough connect. It seemed like this chase could have been tricky, but uh, that was as easy as the Indian batsman could have made it look. Uh, in world cricket, there's no better sight than Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma batting together on, on a wicket like that. And they showed their class and it showed the inexperience of some of their um, West Indian bowlers. But it was truly great to watch. It's hardly like we're going to say something we've not said before. Top three, these two batting, yeah. a return of sorts for Virat Kohli in ODI cricket. but. No signs of rust with the white ball. Not at all. I mean, yeah, I got that 100 yeah. in the, test, the first test match as well. Looked like a net session, really, yeah. at one point. I mean, just uh, just hit boundaries at will. Uh, rotated strike when they wanted. Rohit got his 50 or 51 balls and then ended up 152 of 117. Yeah. Uh, just the change in gears. Uh, also probably found out why Indians found it that difficult with the ball as well. Looks like one of the smaller grounds in India mm -hmm. where you know a lot of the times they just punch the ball in the gap and the deep deep fielders couldn't cut it off. So yeah, just the top three, are the, I, don't, I don't think there's a better top three and uh, Shikhar Dhawan missed out tonight. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think there's a better top three in world cricket at the moment uh, uh, or in, in the world in one day cricket at the moment. Just makes chasing look so easy i mean 322 is a mm. is a is not an easy target doesn't matter what attack you're facing whether it's a inexperienced attack or not apart from that brief spell with the seamers at the start uh, there was there was always only one yeah. result on the cards 38 fours and what 11 sixes so they had plenty to uh, relish the Gohati crowd on their first one day international at that particular ground. Look at the areas that they got their runs, and it seemed almost ridiculous that even punches were going for fours. It's just that sort of ground. I mean, you've seen grounds like this in the East. The Eden Gardens has a fast outfield, 60 65 meter boundaries. Virat Kohli, comfortable runs all round, plenty square. But the ease with which the boundary hitting was, can you sympathize for the bowlers, Ajit? <laughs> yeah, you've got to. I mean, when 322 gets stays in what, 42 uh, and a half overs. Uh, or just over 42 overs, uh, you've got to sympathise with the bowlers. I mean, that's that's the state of one-day cricket at the moment, really, with two two white balls, uh, you know, wickets as flat as the one we saw tonight, uh, just true bounce, uh, and not uh, not big grounds, you know, smallish grounds. So, yeah. and and top quality batsmen, obviously. I mean, that that kind of uh, ability with the bat, uh, only good players have, and uh, these two. The consistency, I mean, 36 one-day hundreds and 20 mm. one-day hundreds uh, at the top is why India has been so successful uh, in one-day cricket. Yeah, that's 140 for Virat Kohli. Rohit Sharma not far behind, 152. Just have a look at where he got his runs. And we know Rohit to get into its different gears once he's settled. Eight sixes, that's always what stands out. When he gets daddy hundreds, as he often does, he tends to get plenty of sixes. So, runs through uh, the leg side. I mean, the last time Gohati hosted the West Indies in a one-day international was 1987. Phil Simmons might remember that day where 175 <laughs> was enough runs and Viv Richards scored 41, <laughs> Phil scored 34 and they won the game. 170 beat 150. <laughs> Here we are with 320 not being enough. Phil? Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I was there for that game. I was, I was reminiscing about that today and it's, it's changed. The game has changed worldwide so much um, and I think a lot uh, to do with 2020 cricket. But... The, the, the scores are never enough. You never know batting first how much you need to get on any ground. And especially playing against India, who are, what I would say, the best chase inside in the world, um, you never know how much is enough. Um, looking at it today, you could see that the wicket was um, a very good wicket to bat on. The way how Hetmeyer just played through the line with some of the balls, it was, it was going to be either get Kohli early or get Roy early or pay the price.
Okay. Now, I'm not going to get into this debate of it being too easy for the batsmen because we've done that. We have to accept what, what international yeah. cricket is now. But Phil, you said it's tough when you're batting first as to what to get. Even that being said, 250 is what they got inside 40 overs. They just lost too many wickets. There was a point, had they just had a few wickets, you thought maybe they could have even got 360, 370. West Indies, if they look back at that first innings, can we be critical of just losing too many wickets too soon? I think losing too many wickets, but a couple soft dismissals. I think somebody like Kieran Powell needed to go on and do what Roy and, and, and Vera did because he got the start that was needed, 50 odd, and um, getting out caught on the boundary at that point in time was not a good thing. Shea Hope started again. So uh, there's a few things that they can look back on and know that they were 50, 60 runs short or, or where they should have been. Yeah, that's a good point because right after his 50, Kieran Powell goes right after his 100. Uh, hit my goes and it wasn't like they were terrific ball. Uh, they all were nice lo all look good. Yeah. Uh, holder, you know, last tour of Chahal, uh, and still what eight overs to go after mm -hmm. that, or six overs to go after that, trying to play that uh, you know funky shot or a cheeky shot for what it was going to fetch him one run anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, those sorts of little things. I'm not sure that would have been enough. It would have, it might have put a little bit more pressure on India. But the way Rohit and uh, Virat made it look easy, uh, 360 might might not have been enough on the night. You've got to feel a feel for the bowlers. I mean, I haven't played at that ground or I haven't seen it. Hmm. Uh, but can't imagine what size that ground is uh, yeah. because I mean, fours, okay, sixes, they still went way back in the stands uh, every time Rohit hit it. But the boundaries were scored so easily. I mean, the hmm. guys on the on the fence had no chance to cut it off. So. Uh, yeah, you've got to feel some sympathy for the bowlers. There aren't too many, big, a little bit more there aren't too many big grounds in India, so it's hardly <laughs> no, like I should I mean, single out Gohati. Not really. Uh, that's why I said I haven't played at it. Yes, uh, of course. I don't know whether it's different to some of the other ground, fast scoring grounds, but the boundaries, it was just uh, racing. It's also to the, the outfield, not just the size of the boundary, but it raced. It's like the Eden Gardens, it gives you no mm, chance. Yeah, I mean, wonder whether there was a little bit of dew where it just uh, skidded no, on the surface, okay. but uh, nothing to take away from the. Uh, the skills of the batters. Okay, uh, word on use when the Chahal on a day where everyone yeah. else went at 7, 8, 9 to bowl 10 overs and 3 wickets. Probably the difference between the West Indies getting more. Yeah, and wickets, you know, 3 wickets uh, at crucial stages. So, uh, even Holder towards that, uh, you know, yeah. bat, looked so good again with the bat. Uh, to get him out then, uh, and in spite of uh, Roach and Vishu had to put that partnership to get them to where they were, otherwise they were well shot. So. Yeah, just stands out every time he bowls for India in those middle overs. I think that's been the difference when, say, uh, Jadeja and Ashwin, that's mm. why they were left out of the squad for a Kuldeep and a Chahal, because they get wickets in the middle. I mean, we've seen with the West Indian innings today, as soon as they didn't get wickets in that middle, middle of their innings, uh, it's so much easier for the batsmen. Yeah, I mean, good wrist spinners, Phil, in your team today. You know that, uh, being with Afghanistan too, uh, that it makes the biggest difference. The minute you have good wrist spin, you can trouble even quality batsmen. Virat Kohli falling to leg spin today. Uh, just the assessment from this game, were you surprised that Kuldeep Yadav was in part of the setup? And would you expect a bit more from Devendra Bishu? It's very surprised that Kuldeep wasn't part of the, of the 11. Because I think when you look back at West Indies itself, they, they have trouble against spin. But just his what he's done for the team in, in the recent past. And we look back at Asia Cup where, where we played and you could see that. But you look at Chahal today and I think the important wicket was getting someone who relishes playing in India conditions, Marlon Samuels, in the second ball. And I think that was a huge wicket for India in in getting in stopping the run rate and he bowled as best as he could today and restricted restricted runs is exceptional in that condition I'm just trying to see if there are more wrist spinners that they can turn to but it doesn't look like the windies have got any more leg spin or wrist spin options phil oh i, I haven't seen any 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 back of the arm bowlers coming out in the recent past i think Bishu has been there for a while um, you had a couple of young folk, but nobody um, that wrist spin. You have more left arm spinners mm. coming out and playing and, and 
doing well, but no risk spinners. Well, it looks too easy against someone like Ashley Nurse. But let's speak of the fast bowlers. And while the scoreboard doesn't make good reading for Shane Thomas's ODI debut, there's a bit of it that got all of us excited. I'll start with you as a fast bowler. You don't mind a big fellow running in, tall jump, <laughs> and gets to the opening batsman. Yeah, I mean, you could see the ball. pace was there. Virat Kohli sort of played him really well when he came in. Otherwise, you know, at that point, it looked like India were in a bit of trouble once he got uh, Shikhar Dhawan out. Great first over to bowl mm -hmm. at him. Uh, you know, the pace was right up there. You could see the ball a nice carry. Uh, yeah, exciting. And first game in India, you know, it's, yeah. it's not not an easy place to bowl at all. Uh, looked very impressive. Like uh, Phil said, you know, if he's a quick learner and keeps improving, uh, he's going to be a huge asset for West Indies going forward. Yeah. I mean, it, these are tough conditions to bowl against some high-quality uh, batsmen. If he can uh, keep improving in this series itself, yeah. uh, might make things a lot easier for him going uh, away from India. He's got to improve on his celebration. He nearly took his wicketkeeper out with that <laughs> high five, Phil. But you'd like to see a bit more about Shane Thomas, I'm sure, wouldn't you? Uh, yes, yes. I, I, he is. He is what the future looks like. And I think from where he's come from, um, to make that impact in his first game, 10, 10 for 80 something in your first game, I don't have a problem with that because you know that he's going to learn from that and he's going to get better. And as I just said, um, if he learns as this tournament, as the series goes on, then come into the fourth and fifth one days, we could see a different, a change in, in what's happened today. OK, looking ahead to the second game, a uh, quick turnaround, just a few days. And there are things the West Indies can take positively from this. But from India's point of view, this combination they went with, batsmen seem great at the top of the order. Would you want Kuldeep Yadav in? Uh, in that side. I think so. Again, you'll want to see the conditions once they yeah. get to Isaac uh, and what it's like. But I can't imagine it being too different. The wicket will still be very mm. good. Uh, it's again not not a very big ground either. Uh, yeah, Kuldeep provides you with uh, you know with variety. A lot of batsmen are not picking him world over. Uh, and if your top order is in such such good shape, why not? I mean, uh, Ravinder Jadeja for. The package that he gets to the Indian team, he still has his limitations when it's a flat wicket uh, with the ball. And if he's going to be your fifth bowler, sixth bowler, you can understand. But if he's going to be your fifth bowler, it's always going to be a challenge for Virat Kohli. I mean, I, I thought the West Indies did really well with the bat. Yes, they were in position to get a lot more. Uh, but 322 is still a formidable total. I and, mean, you know, there might be a day where the Indian top three don't play as well as, or the top two out of the top three don't play as well as they did tonight. Uh, yeah, I think Kuldeep's got to play in that 11 if the batting's in such good form. Okay, Phil, from the West Indies point of view, just one game, should they just...